interested, I want to spend some time after that talking about my style as a DM and the kind of campaign I'm running. I'm going to be up front, not for everyone. And there are just certain kinds of players that don't tend to I do. So I want to talk about a couple of aspects and make sure it's not a deal breaker for anybody. I don't want you all to feel like I'm trying to weed anybody out, but and I've experienced enough. There's certain kinds of people that just well. So I don't want you to have feelings or anything. Say, hey, this is just not the kind of game I'm looking for. This isn't what I thought it would be. Fun if we identify that now that we're not a good fit, then to get going and just clash at every turn and all that kind of stuff. Just a bunch of general stuff about Aeneas, and then probably we'll do, you know, the last half of it will be QA, and you guys can ask me any questions about character stuff, backstory, world, all that kind of stuff. Kind of it in a nutshell. So on that note, uh, with intros, uh, feel free to jump in. All right. I'm Rusiko. I'm a human thief. And uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, my name's Josh. Um, I'll be playing Wiglaf Huvanen. Uh, the Paladin. Um, I've been playing second edition since uh, 1997. Um, right when uh, third edition was coming out, all my friends agreed that um, since the second edition books would be so inexpensive uh, at that time because everyone was selling their second edition books and buying third edition, that we would play second. And um, so I, I took advantage of that for over the next like 15 years. I bought a small library of second edition books and um, I've been running my own campaign since 2002 um, on and off and um, it's now in its third well I guess you could call it its fourth iteration now <coughs> four different groups have run through it um, and uh, I'm doing it on on roll 20 this time so uh, it's been going since like June of 2016 and um, it's still going, so um, I've been using Roll20 since like the spring of 2015, and I've learned a lot about <coughs> um, how to use um, the Roll20 system with uh, macros and whatnot, and um, <coughs> I know a lot about using uh, Roll20 to DM, so if you have any um, issues uh, with anything... Um, I would be happy uh, to to help out uh, Slappy, and um, awesome. Um, go ahead. Macros. I had a lot of trouble with like the uh, initiative one. Yeah, I did a lot of it by on pen, just using pen and paper. I can do a lot of like the bonuses and stuff for the basic rules in my head. I know what to add. So, but yeah, if you can help me set that up and then we can automate things, that would be great. So let me follow up with you on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually have an entire system. Uh, that I wrote for this character sheet that you chose um, that uh, it essentially makes it so that you don't have to open up the character sheet during combat for the most part you can just uh, run everything off the token you can run attacks macro or uh, uh, initiative um, any kind of checks like skill checks ability checks um, proficiency checks you can do saving throws right off the token it's it's great so I'd, oh. I'd be happy to help hey. out with that, yeah, automation. Uh, but yeah, I need to schedule a time. My name's Josh again. So either Moco or Stank, it's go next, I guess. Uh, uh, hey, my name is Josh. I uh, it's uh, my character is Osea Frey. Uh, she's a half elf, a yeah, cleric, a cleric magic user, and. Uh, I, I kind of got uh, uh, typecasted as a cleric, so every every game I had like six games on uh, roll twenty, and I've been a cleric every time. So, wow. uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, that's cool. My first character, and I was female in my first game. So, hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, so I've, I've been bouncing. I've been playing a lot of like uh, kind of offbeat games on here. Like I was doing a Starship Trooper one, and uh, 
and uh, uh, something Flame Princess, and, uh, and I'm just having fun. And this is uh, the first time I'm playing this box set, and always kind of wanted to check it out. And it sounds cool. So that's awesome. So you know all the um, ins and outs of like the lower level spells and everything for the cleric class. Uh, not really for a magic user, but I mean, uh, I mean, I have the book. I'll go through it, and you know, I don't really know it off the top of my head, but you know, mm. that's fine. Work with it, so. We're happy to help you, so no problems there. Uh, okay, I guess last but not least, uh, Moko. I'm playing Jormir, the Dwarven cleric. I've been on roll twenty for a little over a year now. I've played in. A few different campaigns of, you know, basic to five five E. Um, I've been playing D and D since Redbox came out, which was way long time ago. I'm in. Um, usually I play the fighter types, but uh, I went with cleric this time. Um, I'm not so much the great role player that other people seem to be, but you know, I'm trying to learn how to do that a little better. Uh, I know the combat and whatnot pretty well. I guess I'm more oriented to that side, so I hope that's not going to be an issue. But again, I, I, I'm trying to get better as far as role playing goes. Um, so I'm not sure what you were referring to as far as good fits or whatnot. But uh, I'm in. So yeah, that's it. In mind, I'll we'll talk a little bit more here in just a second. But yeah. I don't want anybody to think just because everybody's got their strengths and weaknesses, but there's just certain kinds of players that, in a nutshell, and I'll elaborate more in a second, but I found people that just like hack and slash that absolutely, I'm a, let me just, I guess that's a great place to just kind of, well, actually, I want to do policy stuff first, but we'll get back to this here in a second. But short version, I'm a storyteller DM, and I'm, I'm really into role playing and character development. There's going to be combat. I don't want anybody to think that this is going to be a game that's, you know, combat or anything, but I emphasize role playing over combat. And there are some people, and I'll give specific examples that just really, and the fact that combat is kind of a secondary thing in my game, I really enjoy making a persona and role playing, and that tends to annoy them. So, yeah, but as long as you're open or that's something you want proven, I don't see any problems. So, like I said, we'll get more into that here in a second. Stuff again. I let me start by saying, first of all, I'm a really easygoing guy. I don't want anyone here to think that I am for procedures and policies. I'm not, but again, I've just had so many problems. I'm talking grown adults like law students, school teachers, parents of small children, people that you think you could get together and play a game and not have any problems. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, and, and every campaign, I inevitably have that one person that constantly has some issue I'm about to go over. Understand, everything I'm going to tell you is a result of one or more people that I've dealt with in the past. So, hard ass, please don't think that I am... You know, I don't have a stick up my butt or anything, I swear. I just need some ground rules for the good of the game. So yeah. starting in on that, I understand. We've got 20 adventures I'm planning to run. Um, they are a mixture of first edition. I'm going to use second ed rules, but um, and they're all classic stuff. I mentioned the first part of the campaign in a nutshell. Off every minute, but it's going to be strongly focused on Ravenloft. We're specifically going to do the Black Box 6 that came out. And the second half is more or less the classic Against the Giant campaign, where um, most of you have probably have at least heard of it. And I've got a special multi-part grand finale that fits really well with that material. So, um, anyway, I understand is it's a 20 adventure campaign put limits on how long it takes to finish an adventure and like i said i'm you know, playing and it takes us a couple sessions that's fine i am not looking to knock out a single adventure 
setting in a single session. So it might take a couple of sessions, at least be the next year, probably somewhere in the 2019 might pin me down on how long it's going to take. And that's going to depend. We'll talk a little more. We'll kind of get a group consensus on every other week thing with some breaks in between adventures we'll talk about that in a second but more or less plan i'm really looking at doing about two hours maybe we can go to three total unanimous consensus we're having a good time and we want to go longer than that even or i do know it's sunday night and if anybody's in like the eastern time zone or another weird time zone that's later than that even they have work early the next day so I want to be mindful of that. I found two hours is a good session. After that, a lot of people just, their eyes tend to glaze over and we tend to lose focus. So, um, Real quick, sorry, uh, real quick, let me just throw in there. I work nights, so I can't go longer than three hours. That's just it's good to know. There. appreciate you telling me that. So, tops, um, I will absolutely... Keep that in mind and respect that, and that's very reasonable. So there we go. Should be late for work or anything, so we will definitely, you know, I'd say probably two and a half hours is going to be average. Sometimes we might end a little early. Sometimes we might go. But we will definitely, when we get the two-hour mark, start looking for a place to wind down so we have a good stopping point at the three-hour mark. On that note, though, this is a, I want everybody to understand this isn't a, a commitment to be here regularly i understand you know this is a game and i want everybody and it's going to be something i'm going to say a lot to take this way too seriously because those people are no fun to deal with and one of the problem player types i have at the same time we've got to have that balance and sometimes it's going to mean if, if there's a conflict on sunday night like for example if sunday night football is your thing the mindset of if my I'll be here on Sunday if my team's not playing, for example, that's just not going to work. So people get sick, people go on vacation, people have business trips. You got a term paper. Term paper if you're a student that's due Monday morning or a big exam. Sometimes if real life things do come up, but it needs to be few and far between. If you're if you're here every every third session or every fourth, it's just not going to work. So understand that up front. This can't be casual. I can't have part-time players. And on that same note, you know, that constantly have to bail on us early or perpetually 30 and 45 minutes late. It's disruptive and, you know, right on time player, a about two years ago, I ran an in-person game, and the guy was 45 minutes late every single week. Not only was he late, but then he wanted to take his time settling in for a while, and it's just like... <sighs> you to be ready to just unpack and jump in. We'll pause real quick to catch up on what you missed, but you know, if you guys want to you know, kind of just chit-chat Get here a little early so we can, you know, that's usually how we do it in an in-person game. So I'm going to treat this just like we're sitting at a table face-to-face. -face. So any questions? Everybody cool with that? That sounds great to me. Uh, yeah, I'm good with that. I, I like when it's game time, it's game time, not let's okay. talk about politics yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so, I, you know, I'll probably, because I right now I'm self-employed, um, I do have a, a minor side job, but so every once in a while I work part-time for a city that's very tourism-based. So on rare occasions, I may have something where, and it's very, very rare that we ever have anything on Sunday night. But you know, like I said, there may be things occasionally. I know there's a couple times I'm going to be traveling. I'll probably be back Sunday afternoon. So here, and that's kind of how I'm, I'll try to be here, you know, a good 30 minutes in advance myself. And that way if, there's something we need to talk about or work out before game time. I'll try to make myself available. I'll check in on the Discord channel during the weeks. But um, you know, if you guys just want to, you know, hang out and BS a little bit, let's do it. Let's try to get here 30 minutes beforehand, if at all possible. Start right 
and I'm going to say I'm in central time, just so y'all know. So I'm going to refer to everything as seven o'clock. That maybe if you're Pacific, you may be five. It may be eight o'clock Eastern. But when we get here at seven or whatever start, whatever times I'm here in, right on the dot. But within say by ten after, we need to to be ready to roll time here. So I think everybody's cool with that. Already kind of gathered. This is an adult game. If you, let me just put it like this: If you ask me to put a, a, a like a movie rating on the game, I'm going to consider it rated R. But I'm going to tell you right now: I use foul language, and I know probably everybody else here does. So, usually, if there's anybody who really has a problem with adult language, they've spoken up before they joined. So, exist here. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be excessive, but it's going to be it's going to get upset or offended by that. I'm just going to be open right now. I am game. Um, so is that a problem for anybody? Is there anybody that's like really, you know, you've got really strong religious belief or family values where that's going to be a problem? Nope. Nope. I was uh, in the military for nine and a half years so i i swear like a soldier me too so we're, we're good yeah i just thought that was worth mentioning generally uh like i said if there's somebody that's very very um that's a big deal to them they will contact me and say what is your policy on that is that going to be allowed and i didn't hear that from anybody so i just wanted to just so we didn't have any misunderstandings there on that same note with rated r um a rated nc17 game Torture, rape, sex, that stuff all happens, but just we're not going to role play it out or get into graphic details. There are a lot of dungeons where there's chamber present. So I bring that up because I did have a player that obviously was disturbed. I've already said no evil characters, but stick torture in graphic detail and, you know, it won't be a problem with anybody, but. We're not going to play out rape scenes or, you know, sadistically or anything like that. So just anybody, but I do want to put that line. That's where the that's where the line in the sand is. Okay. I prefer that as well. <clears throat> I don't really like to role play sexual encounters with, you know, a bunch of guys in the room. Uh, I mean, like I said, <laughs> I've played cyber <laughs> Cybering is... Uh something that i've never really attempted i've never been interested and i, I, I think are... that's a different website yeah <laughs> well I, there is there are gaming groups um on roll 20 that do D D uh cyber sex so it's, it's exactly what i'm talking yeah, about there's, uh, there's another place for that if you prefer it and this i hear right about it, it... yeah <laughs> About it, go. You know, there's plenty of places to do that. Um, I did have a player. That was the kind of game they were used to. They were basically yeah. role play, light on role playing, and heavy. They were like on... acting out their mental illness. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well put. Well put. So yeah, if you if your character's thing is to go to the brothel at every town and bang a local whore, that's your right. Oh yeah. Local whore for you. I just want. Just. Just that's what I'm alluding to. Yeah. Hey, Slappy. I uh, can't believe I never thought about asking this before. What is our schedule? Is this every Sunday? What I said was tentatively it's every other Sunday. We may go to, you know, several Sundays in a row. Module. Week off. So it's going to be a lot of Sundays. It's not going one way or another. I don't think it's going to be every single Sunday, but it's going to be. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because I can't believe I didn't think to ever ask. Advertises in every other week. So if somebody came here with the expectation that we were going to have every other week off and that's important to you, dedicated player, I am willing to accommodate that. This is there. The biggest reason I said every other week is a dm and i do you know i am self-employed so um uh, i've got kind of a full schedule i did think long and hard about could i make this commitment before i signed up for this game to to, to do this 
I may need a little time to get. I'm going to try to stay an adventure ahead. And honestly, is I'm going to sit down. I'm going to build up because I got to build out the maps in addition to all the other standard D and D stuff. Module, making notes, visual aids, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm just the biggest thing is, is there's going to be times I'm going to need a week to get caught up on all that. So my best guess initially is, like I said, unless I know that people can't make it, and if there are five of us, I can't cancel for just one. Uh, we may have to reschedule, but it, you know, we're unfortunately not going to be able to probably hold off for that one. Uh, All right, I just was wondering. I, I didn't know what our schedule was. Uh, question: um, You're are you you're gonna post game times in the roll twenty forum, correct? The little thing, if you notice on the main page, it says next game is. Yeah. We'll check in with you guys here on the on Discord. So I will use both of those places to make okay, sure that great. we're all on the same page. Yeah, I like I like when it's posted on the forum. It's easy to see and you know exactly what's what. And I will check. I will pop in here. I don't know how much I'm gonna chit chat with everybody on here. I might be on a lot, you know. But I will make sure, knowing that we're going to use Discord, that I at least put it in text. So when you log in, you can scroll through what you missed, and and that'd be a good way. If you can give it to me in two places, you can PM me and you can mention it in here. Um, that way, I've seen it twice, and we all know, and somebody's caught the fact you can't be here. So if you know in advance you're going out of town for a business trip that weekend or whatever it is. Yeah. So like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll come to a definite consensus if we're going to meet and start. And I'm really hoping to start next weekend, but, you know, we'll, we'll make sure everybody's available. Um, so that's. Uh, I just I just wanted to interject when you were talking about um, taking a week to prep. Uh, if it comes down to, you know, you need time to to make monster sheets. Um, I've been running my campaign for almost two years now, and I have a lot of, I have a rather large collection of monsters by now. Great. And that can, could be a big help. Yeah, I can I can import some for you if if you want, um, so that you can use them. Anything like that would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, you know, just it's it's mostly the basic stuff that you find in the wilderness. You know, your your goblins, kobolds, orcs, ogres, giants, stuff like that. So. You know, again, I'll I'll have like, uh, I can just. It on notebook paper right here so i've got the basic stats right in front of me like hard I, i'm a hard copy guy on a lot of levels i like to physically have opposed to a pdf for looking on the screen but yeah anything like that would definitely be appreciated yeah mostly i'm more concerned about let me also say um i'm going to use the map a lot but i am not a dm i am not going to build out literally we have a map to move your token on. If there's, you know, we might be looking at like the game world map sometimes. We have a dungeon. Um, sometimes I will scan the map, which is too small for us to move our tokens on, and I'll black that out with the Bog of War. If y'all are familiar with the old Final Fantasy games on Nintendo where you get to an encounter and the screen goes blam and, you know, so what I may do is let's basically make maps of individual rooms where we need to put our tokens in them to deal with encounters really well, as opposed to trying to recreate a big, fancy, colorful map. I'm treating this like basically, again, like we're around a table where if we were meeting in person, I would have a whiteboard Final or Fantasy a... Final Fantasy is a cool way to do it. I just kind of use it like that, just like I would have a battle mat and, and metal miniatures if you guys are like old old school where you have, of course, the newer editions, 4th and 5th are really mini heavy, but the game board is a virtual whiteboard, like an MMO. You know, it's another thing. I'm not, well, definitely, you know, utilize those graphics, but we're not going to have it set up like it's an MMO video game kind of thing, like every minute of the game. Back to policy stuff um, on, you know, metagaming and rules lawyers is the guy that breaks the movie or, you know, you, you tell everybody in the car has and you spoil the movie. I have to get 
long-winded is Ravenloft box set and know about Ravenloft, your character doesn't know anything about Ravenloft. Character knowledge. If you recognize an adventure you've played before, same thing. No spoilers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Most people are really pretty good about that, but um, I have had problems. I've literally had players figure, look at the cover, and go, "Oh, okay," and they go out and they buy the module, or they already have it, and they go and they read through it. Saying that was a problem with my play-by-post games, where you post on a message board and we don't do it in real time. Right. And it was obvious the person had the copy of the adventure and they conveniently knew like what monsters were in the room. They were just always a little too prepared. Hmm. Same thing. Uh, well, rules lawyering, I'm sure everybody, everybody basically knows what a rules lawyer is, right? Yeah. Yep. It's your world. I'm missing it. Sorry. It's your world. I'm missing it. Basically, in short, the guy. There are a lot of people who are great assets, like Josh, who said he, you know, he's got all these tools to help me out, which is fantastic. Inside and out, there's a way to use that in a positive way to help us out. To you know, somebody can't. As long as I've been playing this game, I still have to look at the rule book from time to time. I know most of it off the top of my head, but sometimes I play and it turns out I'm wrong, and I don't mind being corrected if that's the case. Who is people that are constantly yelling objection like we're you know yeah. like we're reenacting a perry mason episode right people that that is the game to them is constantly they're sitting there ready to pounce with the rule book yeah flip the book open and they're trying to find a way to undo or argue that with can't happen yeah no fun a big one as far as me kicking players out is people that constantly and I'm going to say this one a couple times. It doesn't sound like from what I'm hearing from you guys that this is even going to be a problem, but same team here, we're here to... I look at D&D as a rules and everything, but we're creating an interactive story. You guys are all basically the main characters in a story and we tell a story. We're not... I don't look at D&D as a combat game for things like combat and help us to resolve... We're going to figure out how the dice help us determine your success and failure. And sometimes bad rolls can lead to really interesting things like Consolo stepping on that twig when he's about to uh, ambush the biker scout Return of the Jedi when they're on indoor. If you wanted to put you know, a movie like Star Wars into an RPG, that would be like probably a failed dex check. Yeah. Huge speeder bike check. So sometimes people get really hung up when they make a bad roll. Most of the roles are going to be outside of combat are, or, or, hey, if you pass this role, I'll tell you an interesting tidbit that your character happens to know based on his background. Now, I just don't want people to get hung up on the rules, and anybody, I don't, it doesn't sound like anybody here has a problem with the concept of you're in, you're in competition with the DM or the other players, but I have dealt with a lot of that with people who get into constant pissing contests, and they see dit thing it's a cooperative game it's worked together and um it's been a big one one of the big game breakers where i've had some really nasty things where i've had to kick people out is they get very belligerent about that and talk more about that here in a second but not cooperate with the situation as far as participating in the adventure because it's like me and if i go along with what you're wanting me to do somehow and it's not like that at all So I don't think we've got any problem with that from what I'm hearing from everybody, which is great. Um, the, yeah, the rules are up to uh, DM discretion. So, yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that out of everybody because, you know, again, I've had people that want to sit there and say, it says right here, and they slam their foot on the table, that how it is and you're not following the book. So same page there. Um Find my last request. Yeah, well, if you, if you look at uh, uh, spell jammer, it's like you know, it's like you know, the rules can pretty much go anywhere. So, exactly, and you know, that's the thing is what 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 D and D is to one person may be totally different from that from what I'm doing. So, it sounds like we're all on the same page. Um, your policy stuff is. It sounds like all of you guys have a lot of gaming experience, so I'm not terribly worried. 
basic proficiency with roll 20 and D and D mechanics. And please, please, please know your character's abilities. I'm a bright eyed newbie. I don't think I've gotten this group, but from their character. Cleric only knows how to hit things with his mace and they have no idea my game I ran last year. And it's like every time they came in here, here it was a play by post, but they never they never got any better and they never took really made any attempt to understand what they were doing and why. They had no idea what that meant or what and they never learned the dice or anything. A while, but you know, right, yeah, and they can't tell the difference between the d8 and the d10. <laughs> d20, it's a big round one, and they still don't know what the d20 is. Yeah, and in like a live game problem as opposed to a virtual tabletop problem, but that's another thing. And it's, I, I can get, hear from what I'm from talking to you guys, you guys all have a lot of experience, so we're not going to have those issues, but. Just kind of familiarize yourself with Roll20. I think probably most of you guys have more experience than I do from what I'm hearing, but functions, and if you, you know, there's a tutorial, and if you need to review that from time to time to make sure I knew it all and blank out, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I'm going to forget how to do something from time to time, mechanics or a rule, and I might have to stop or say just how it works, but more or less, Command where it's of the game and the system where be totally incompetent and constantly having to pause for ten minutes to look things up or where her button is to make something happen. So that's all I'm asking is roll twenty and you know your spells and you know whatever. And we'll be patient for a couple sessions if you're if you're playing a new class you're not familiar with or whatever. Fine. I think that pretty well sums that up. Any other questions on policy stuff? I don't have any questions. I think you've hit the nail on the head. It sounds like we're all on the same page so far. I've been pretty lucky on here, so like the, the few games I've had on here, everybody's been cool. So. Yeah, what kind of dick kids have you been playing with? Yeah, so, you know, so, I, I just really made been unlucky, here, but... Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Campaign style, and this is where I'm going to get into the nitty gritty of you may not work out if and lighthearted with a lot of stories about people that haven't worked out and why. I from everything I'm hearing, I think we're going to really well together, but and at the same time that we just clash at every turn because their version of the right way to run D and D is different from how I do it. And in their minds, I'm not doing it right. And they argue and they cause problems and job. I've dropped games just because I am miserable and stressed out. And I was really looking forward to running a game for somebody or playing in one as a player. And cause I had like, and I just ended up saying it's not worth the stress. And I just ended up just ending the game. Yeah. To head off at the pass here, right? Um, I said basically, I am a storytelling DM that is really into character development. Secondary, um, like I said, I, I just in short, I don't run hack and slash campaigns. You know, you look at the early D and D modules, you would have a plot like I'm in a very vague backstory with the one noise fleshed out and. Um, it's castle to save the king's daughter, the princess, and you run room to room. I read a description. You hack the shit out of the monsters, take their treasure. You go to the next room. Yeah. You get to the bottom of the dungeon or wherever the the uh, black knight is. You have a big epic fight with the black knight. You free the princess. That's the game. And we say, the role playing in the dialogue is very short and. Live for that kind of game. They look at it as a video game, and um, they, their eyes glaze over, and they they're basically not there when we're not doing combat. Hmm. Frustrated if if the role playing gets long winded, or heaven forbid, we have a session where we don't really actually for the most part. So the people that aren't going to work out. So yeah. 
So is there anybody, because if everybody's cool with that, we can kind of go through this part and not make it tedious. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem with different styles. I mean, I've been doing a lot of homebrew stuff, and it's uh, it's up to your discretion, so, you know. Okay. So as long as you guys are cool and understand that, you know, we're, we're going to look at this as a story as opposed to a combat game, I think will be cool. Um, um, one of the things I'm a real stickler, yeah. Oh, I was just about to say, uh, would it be all right if I um, use the restroom real quick and come back? He should no. take a break. Kick him out. <laughs> Kidding. Kidding. Yeah, anybody, um, no, just so you know, for for two minutes, we have two hours here, guys. I'm just going to say this once. Go to the fridge to get food or drinks or use the potty or take the dog out is absolutely forbidden. What? <laughs> Uh, you know, this is D&D dot time, guys. Potty on your own time. But yeah, if anybody needs to take a quick break, just okay, let me know when you're back. Right. Yeah, I just gotta use the toilet real quick. I'll be right back. Paints paladins. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, anybody, um, just so you know. I don't think he's here. Has anybody still got roll 20 open? Yep. All of us do, except you. Because when I do it, hijacks my mic, and I need to figure out how to. Uh, just to turn that. yours off. Turn yeah. yours off. But usually it echoes, so it should have two. You should hear two uh, with your mic. But I, I don't know. Okay, we'll just uh, turn it off. Are you using Chrome? I'm in Chrome for Discord. I was in Firefox. See, I'm basically a Chrome user. Been for oh. Roll20. Only doing that because I know that the newest version of Chrome does not support voice chat. I think it used to because I'm pretty sure I ran last year with Chrome. So I think that's like a, a, a new compatibility issue, but um, it's really good here. So like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll get that worked out. I just, big thing is just want to make sure that nobody else popped in over there that's not in here. Nope. Okay. Well, we're 40 minutes in, so I will go in. That Dallas guy is just going to get bumped. And I think even if Chaos Agent doesn't work out, I've been talking to him. That Chaos Agent doesn't work out. I think we've got. We've, I know we've got basically a cleric, a paladin, a cleric, mage. So we got three of the four people here tonight have some degree of healing. So, uh, Risigo, the other three be healed. That? I said I don't heal. I believe. Saying so, make sure that you make at least one really good friend with the other three because that could be a problem. I tends to be the one that has the heavy, the heavy backpack. So, I stabby stabby, stabby guy. <laughs> yeah, so if it ends up just. Being the four of us, I think we're okay. I don't think we need to bring anybody else in. We'll see what happens with Chaos Agent. He told me in advance this morning here, but he had really, you know, he's really got his character put together. So I think he'll be okay. I just, I'm going to go through all the stuff we're talking about with him and make sure that we're a good fit. Anyway, what I was about to say is um, one of the things I'm a big stickler about, and I've got a character story for you just to illustrate this point. Really big on correctly and role-playing the way you lay out your stats and what i mean is and this is something that's a foreign concept to people that are more more into the combat type games and light on story because some dms just don't give a crap if your paladin is lawful good it's like a blank because the rules say you have to but um um what do i mean by role play rules you can nip tuck them you know so I mean by role playing your stats correctly, if you put charisma and you are just like a really just sarcastic, you can stand as far, I mean, in character, not necessarily in person, character, charisma correctly, which is a, a kind of a given, but the problem specifically, I had this with this one guy who's playing a ranger school teacher he was a really nice really smart intelligent guy riddles strategy 
solving puzzles, putting information together. But we had a great big problem, and that was he had an eight intelligence, and he was playing his character more like he had a 16 plus intelligence. And I called him out on it, and he's like, well, you know, and he was just totally caught off guard. Well, what do you mean? You know, eight is below average. You can't, I'm not saying you have to be like completely dumbass. Cipher for certain things because. It doesn't make sense for you to be the, the smart guy and the, the you're the brains of the party. And that's just, did he got kind of upset about that. And he was, he was one of the people, nice guy. We didn't like get into like. It's not compatible with my gaming style. He really didn't like all the story stuff. He was all about rolling dice and this idea of what do you mean? To he couldn't play the character that way because Ranger intelligence isn't important. And I'm like, yeah, but since you're you know you're playing this genius character with an eight intelligence, so be a deal breaker for people when I you know because they're like they get upset about that and it's like hmm. you know why are you know you're ruining my fun they just people that play good alignments because i i just found evil characters are a train wreck on yeah. their sheet and proceed to be chaotic evil anyway and um you know i'm like hey you're not chaotic evil people or chaotic good people don't sadistically torture people yeah. Caps to make them talk is not a good character. Character does, and again, that person yeah, not lawful good, yeah. was disturbed anyway. But they got a character who is into sadistic torture, pleasure even when it's not necessary. Uh, correctly, so yeah, that's pretty. Oh, so the alignments can't change. You can't uh, go across your alignment when you do. Things. I'm okay with it a little bit. Nobody is maybe lawful good all the time, but you need to nothing blatantly. And sometimes, and this can be a, care, a problem for like the paladin in particular, because the paladin can only be lawful good. He can't be any other alignment. It can be pretty rough to be paladin lawful good. Yeah. And, and let's say you chose chaotic neutral, and not one of my favorite alignments for. Hold on, I don't want to get a long-winded explanation about chaotic neutrals, but <laughs> really thinking things out and debating your the consequences of your action and not being impulsive. You're not being chaotic neutral. Okay. Neutral and you're more chaotic good. You know, let's just change your if it's legal or whatever. Let's just change your alignment in any way. The only problem we run into is again if you've got a character that like a druid or a paladin where you've only got one alignment choice and you are just 180 degrees out of phase with what you're supposed to be what your moral compass is supposed to be because of your alignment so um you know if anybody's not used to having to really stick with an alignment or together and like charisma is a throwaway score and put it at the bottom but you're gonna you're playing to be like this charming person character or whatever but do understand that if you've got like an eight or nine charisma and you're really trying to be um trying to play your character with a high charisma that's going to be a problem so any concerns or anything along those lines so no alignment change that it doesn't change right? no alignment change cool. like i said into another alignment and you can legally change it that's fine your alignment correctly and if you um you know the one thing we may run into a problem if somebody's got like we've got a paladin in the group the paladin struggles with lawful good we may need to you know we may need to talk further because unfortunately that's not a solution but generally speaking for most characters three alignments if not the whole gamut to choose from outside of the evil one so Nobody is going to be really upset that they laid their uh, their stats out on a way to make this unstoppable character because it looks good on paper and give you the most bonuses, and that's not going to line up with how you play it. Because <laughs> and those are what we call min max characters, and min maxers who can't 
have a, a personality or a or they've got a list of numbers running through a game world that's again that's the kind of person that doesn't work out so sounds like we're all on the same page there another thing i need to touch talk, uh just touch on real real fast that just do not work because again this is a collaborative game and usually this these are like people that don't have a lot of experience but character is a loner you're very antisocial you're a greedy narcissist and you're mind 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 mm -hmm. evil leaning characters or you're very paranoid and distrustful of everything and everything those characters do not work within the context of a collaborative group and they're not team players so and it's just basically just real quick if you've got an idea like that understand you're not going to probably work out as a player in the group but that character is probably not going to work out so you're either going to have to now or come up with a new one times people work against me and coming up with a character that doesn't fit in with the group and they just clash at every turn and these are mostly people again that are in competition with the dm and they're like and you can't tell me what to do and i don't i'm not hearing that out of anybody so i don't think that's going to be a problem mm -hmm. i'm going to spend a lot more time on that yeah, well, it makes um, it hard for you when people break off because then you have to make a whole another scenario for them you know what i mean so which is a great lead into point number two um i'm just going to skip ahead of all the all of the um problem players because i'm not here now well um you guys are going to be very flexible, and this isn't going to be a problem for any of the four of you here tonight, but uh, I just want to touch on it. I'm going to tell you straight up um, that I've had problems with, and I've got some, two character stories I'll share here in a second about exactly what I'm talking about. You know, I, I've dealt with a number of players in the, over the years that they seem to feel like, one, they're in competition with the DM, and two, that I have no right to tell them how what they can and can't do with their character, and in a nutshell, that they have unlimited free will in my game. And break the fourth wall right now so I don't have to do it later. Complete and total free will, you have what I call limited free will or free will within boundaries. Like, um, well, let me tell you my two character stories, and I, I don't think this is going to be a problem, but... I had this guy years ago named Bart, a junior high school English teacher. I'd be very mature. He was new to D&D. He'd always wanted to play. Um, he had a character named Bex. Bex was a half-elf that grew up in an orphanage. There was a little girl in the orphanage that got adopted out that he thought the king and queen had adopted, and she was a princess. So question is, I had Bex... Bex completely ignored the adventure the rest of us were playing. Black Knight's Castle to go rescue the princess. Bex was off wandering the town looking for this little girl that didn't actually really, you know, it, backstory. He came in with a whole campaign written that he expected me to run with his own cast of bad guys. And That's weird. <laughs> You know, it's extreme, but it's happened several times. I also had this lady named D. D was from Japan. D and D game in the world of Mist Star. We were going through the B series modules, the old classic dungeon crawly ones. Mm -hmm. And I had like a couple of the Gaze of Tears version. D wanted to prove to me that she didn't have free will in my game. And I'm like do everything she could to not go where she was supposed to. Uh huh. The Black Knight's Castle. If that's clearly where tonight's adventure takes place, it's okay to be a little role play and to not initially have you know be cautious of the Black Knight's Castle. When you play like D and you refuse flat out and keep throwing objection and at me when I try to keep it in character to steer you in that direction, and that's exactly what this lady did, and so. Um. The, yeah. So, <clears throat> to me, it sounds like you got trolled a lot. Honestly, these people sound like trolls. They didn't actually want to play D&D. They just were there to mess with you. Exactly. And yeah, um, I would totally just not take that from, from people and just boot them. 
Honestly, and you summed it up. Yeah. You, you summed it up beautifully. So short version, that's exactly what I'm getting at. I'm just, I, I need people who are going to be fun and cooperative. So right. extreme people just to you. And the same thing on splitting up. I'm just going to just ask that you thieves are bad about this. I'm not oh, yeah. talking about Risico. Party goes left and their plan is to go right. And they want to go explore the dungeon on their own, hoping to hoard a bunch of treasure they don't have to share with the group. That's not going to work either. So I just, when we're in dungeons, I'm not saying you can't ever split up. For your ranger ahead to collect information and come back to the party to let everybody know what's ahead if there's any ambushes using their move silently and hide and shadow stuff. We're in the town and between adventures and we're here to buy supplies and attacked or ambushed but generally speaking doesn't need to go with the wizard to the uh, magic shop to get spells if you guys want to divide and conquer and we can just jump around quickly and it's time or you're expecting it to be a role play time i'm okay with that since and we're in a village and it's a mystery and ravenloft there's a lot of mystery stuff and it makes sense during you know it's the middle of the day and it's not like it doesn't feel like there's a big danger of a huge random encounter where a, a zombie infestation is going to just take everybody out up into pairs or splitting a group in half to cover more ground and we can jump back and forth. It's just a lot of people don't metagame. And sometimes it's just helpful. Uh, and then that way you can, can just get together and we don't have to actually literally role play word for word and tell a story everybody's already heard. Sometimes that can be a good thing, but just in short, like combat kind of things, particularly dungeon crawls where there's maps and I've got to unblock the fog of war to reveal things a little bit of time. Asking everybody. Everybody, I think everybody sounds cool with that, but you know. Can I, can I make a suggestion? Um, I find with uh, uh, second edition rules particularly, um, when it comes to exploring a dungeon, um, you can prevent some of that party split off and the pain with revealing the map um, if you use the uh, turn order tracker to give each individual player their own turn that's like uh, cyclic. So that, uh, that I, mean, I never could get to work right, but. Oh, I, I can show you then the ropes on that. Yeah, no problem. If that will help with the problem, and what does that give everybody their own view of the map that nobody else can see? No, but what it does do is um, it kind of slows down the tempo of the exploration so that you can keep up with the players. Because um, when when uh, one individual person has a turn at a time, then you're only taking care of one person's view at a time, and then you know when their turn is over, you can go to the next guy. And then he can, okay. and it usually, uh, from from what I've seen, the players usually stick together as a group. Um, That's good. Somewhat, somewhat. So they'll they'll a little bit of it, but yeah. And usually, this is a problem with new players. But you know, you get the person that's going to be the next Anakin Skywalker who wants to go off and they want to turn evil and think that they're going to get to play the big boss bad guy at the end of the campaign or. They don't ever want to stay with the party and they want to go off because they want to. That's really what I'm looking to avoid. So, mm -hmm. yeah, if, if there's other... anything that, you know, you dislike or, you're, or you don't want me to do, you can just say it and, you know, it'll, it'll be fine. Okay, cool. So, I, I mean, like I said, it sounds like we're getting along famously. There is one other concept that I need to explain, particularly if you've never done Ravenloft and some people have trouble with. And I think you guys are going to be okay with this, but. Checks. Yeah, I'm not really familiar with this um, uh, supplement. Um, Ravenloft is a little bit different from your standard D and D world. You're, if you remember Saturday morning cartoons, you get pulled into a mysterious land that you're basically trying to escape, and you have a whole bunch of misadventures. Mm -hmm. I think that was a plot to like every Saturday morning cartoon ever in the '80s. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Sid Marty Croft, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Every Sid Marty Croft show was some kid. And 
puppet things that he was friends with and he was trying to get back home. The Dungeons and Dragons cartoon is a perfect yeah, example. I was about to say that, the D&D cartoon is like that. Your, I think they were kind of talk, but um, that angle of it really bothered me. I would have rather just seen a cartoon where they're that are, are native to the world instead of real world kids. But anyway, um, choose, and this gets really bad in second, uh, the, the later Ravenloft modules that go with the red box, but, but everybody I am sure here has played video game RPGs like the Resident Evil series and Final Fantasy. Every, everybody familiar with those? You guys know, if I say you, you're familiar with cinematic sequences, you know what I'm talking about, where... Cutscenes, yeah. And then you trigger a cinema, and there's some stuff that you really can't control for a minute. There's, you know, stuff happens. Yeah, it's scripted, yeah. There's scripted events in some of the Ravenloft adventures. They're not right. real bad, but... Okay, examples. Running any of these, there's a game, a really great adventure called The Creative. Red box, and again, we're playing black box adventures. Short version, um, it's evil Pinocchio. Characters <laughs> and all the adults in town are basically attacked by a swarm of dolls, and there's not a lot you can do about it. Wooden pup, living puppet, and a puppet steals your body and goes and has a night on the town. And sure, but a lot of people get very upset that there's nothing they can do. And that one, I didn't have any problems with. There are a couple of times like scripted deaths where the whole party is just either one, it's a throne fight where you are put up against your level five characters and you're put up against a monster you have no hope of beating your butt or some kind of unfair railroaded death that's not permanent, but it's a plot device. So screaming temper tantrums over this people that just cannot deal with that kind of a storyline is there anybody here who has strong objections or is that a deal breaker well that really sounds like symptoms of um somebody who is um autistic um it sounds like you that, may have my, had some autistic players i know i've had an emotionally yeah, troubled so person your experience was like you know Bad like that. I mean, I, I I've never really ran into any problems. I just, yeah. you know, nope. I, I did drop one game, but it wasn't because of a, a combative reason. You know? mm. So anyway, it sounds like that's not gonna be a problem. The, but the, I, the weird yeah. side you're talking about. You usually have interviews, and it's like, no, I'm not putting on a girl suit and walking around. So <laughs> yeah. anyway, yeah, it's just some people just, and it's not. And I I have dealt with a lot of autistic people, and you're right. Some of some of it is just people just. That's their, it gets back to that competitive mindset or yeah. having somebody else They've got control issues and they don't deal well with um, any authority figure as an adversary and the minute they can't control or something happens, they lose their shit over it. And it's like, well, that's not mm. fair. I did, you know, so I just wanted to make sure that we didn't have anything like that. And first thing I'm hearing, I'm not concerned, but. I just feel like hey, we're gonna be playing. There's gonna be one or two issues like that. There's gonna be some kind of kind of scripted sequence. It's part of the story, and it, it it's gonna make the plot more fun. But there's gonna be moments like that, <clears throat> big yeah, one, one where the party has to get taken prisoner. You're the chief. We're the Indians. Yeah, it's all modules. So I mean. It is part of the actual module we're running. Biggest thing is not so much scripted character deaths, but when people get their equipment taken away, their their spell book, their sword. Yeah. There are just certain people that you know that that is what really sets them off. Is you know they've got in their head, there's no way you can take my stuff from me. So anyway, so we're through the worst of it. Um, great group. Um, Um, I guess we'll just cut to the um, the game world stuff. Other questions or anything to point? Since I know I've been kind of uh, long winded. Uh, yeah, uh, just one. Uh, so my deity is called uh, a Bacab, 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 right? Like, that's, that's how you pronounce it. 
B O C C O B. Bacob. One of the yeah, it's one of the deities from right. Greyhawk. Right. That's how you say it. Okay. I've said it in like the country of um. It's actually, if you want to get technical, probably pronounced Jeff, G-E-O-F-F. -F. I always call it Jeff because Jeff sounds like a person's name. <laughs> so my, uh, in fifth ed, my paladin follows Bahamut. My DM pronounces it Bahamut. Mm. So we have, you know, it's tomato, tomato kind of thing. So, you know, if we have a pronunciation difference, some people say drow, some people, I say drow. So, yeah. I'm perfectly fine with whatever you're comfortable with you know that's just that's just a dialect thing and there may be characters from different regions in the game world or because of your background we can explain it like that so i would say it's bacab but if you've got another pronunciation you're comfortable with by all means however you're comfortable pronouncing it that's cool that's cool uh, and you know geoff is another one i just that's how i say it and I'll, you know I, i'm sure it's probably actually jeff because that's an alternate spelling to the name j-e-f-f -F. but anyway um, um general stuff i'm planning to start you know i don't know if everybody how much familiarity you guys have with the greyhawk world uh modern era is called common year or cy i've got a set in about 581 um i did post the calendar with all the different names i'm gonna there's an elven calendar and a human calendar i'm gonna by default refer to it as the uh and the human months 28 days in it. so i think the year is 364 days as opposed to 365 and there are two moons um i'm not gonna get in, all that into or whatever but um if anybody has like a PDF, I could uh, link or I could uh, download. That'd be great too. For... Okay, I, I will look around and see if I can find some good I think articles. I found one, but I, I don't... And if anybody else has anything, the second ed. Um, if you can find the second ed, Greyhawk Player's Handbook, it's a great resource. The earlier one, the hardback one from first edition, works too, but. The problem with the second ed is some of the events that are referenced are referred to in the past tense and they haven't happened in my game yet. So, oh, okay. Yours is a couple quick the... thing. I think I have the world, the one with the world, and it's and it has uh, the the list of deities. But uh, I don't know which one. That one is. I've got to do. So anyway, just a couple uh, of quick, um, quick where some things are in the world because. I think one or two people may have referenced a couple things in there. Just a minor tweak, nothing bad. But and I haven't seen backgrounds from some of you yet, which is fine. Um, over them, just make sure there's nothing that clashes with you know what's going on in the world. The Greyhawk War, you know, there's a Greyhawk War that really comes through second edition that just really just ravishes the world and destroys a couple of the kingdoms and leaves. Well, some areas in ruins none of that's actually happened yet it's either it's about to start or and the events of the Greyhawk War are not going to really fit in with this particular well, you're not going to deal with any of that directly the biggest thing um, center and I don't you know we're not but that generic map if you look like really just up a little bit there's an area called the Kingdom of Ayuz Iuz us or whatever my pronunciation is i use anyway that kingdom god a very evil one he is well known in the uh in the game world for that area yet so that's actually two separate kingdoms called uh the northern part basically if you just less the top part of what is is, is currently the bandit kingdom is known as the shield lands and they are two separate duchies so references to the kingdom of ayus and your background or you know that's that hasn't actually he's active in that area and if you go through and read the timeline or anything that stuff is kind of going on but he's not actually conquered area because as i have researched it my understanding is that is a result post greyhawk war and not or so 
not really relevant to our campaign, so I'm not really terribly concerned with it, but just so there's no confusion. Um, thing is, Geoff, nothing, and I don't think anybody has, but if there's any allusions to, or uh, Geoff, that's still a ways off campaign there or anything. That'll happen the campaign where you guys get directed to that area. So impression that art going in that direction or whatever. We're going to actually start in the city of Greyhawk and the domain of Greyhawk. So if there's anything in your backgrounds, just know that um, it's going to be quite a while before there's nothing building or any you haven't heard any rumors or anything like that so worth a mention i did put on the and i didn't mean to confuse anybody i i put a little teaser in there that um just so you guys have an idea of what where we're going to start sent to the shield lands to retrieve some magic items character when we begin the first adventure and some of it i hadn't quite nailed down how i was going to introduce it but i think this is where i'm going to start of um of the city of Greyhawk, Fanchin, Priestess of Paylor, a very well known and respected woman. I basically, in a nutshell, I need everybody. If you're not from Greyhawk, I don't care where you are. The continent's called the Flaness. Flaness somewhere. I don't care as long as you're not from some obscure somewhere else outside of the world of Greyhawk, which is known as uh, Orith. Continents. We're good, just as long as you're on the Flaness continent. To have an idea of whether you've just been here a few days or you've the city of Greyhawk for a long time, be there before the um, before the first adventure starts on the street that the constable is looking for a group of adventurers to undertake a mission for her. And that's about all the details that have been given. And we're going to probably pick up with you guys entering the constable's office. You don't know each other. And you're here to find out more about this quest and get hired by the constable to, to retrieve some stuff. But you don't really know those details yet. So, so if anybody's background has anything that with that, um, that's kind of is a job being offered by the constable to undertake a quest, and that's uh, the extent of the in-character knowledge there. So that's basically all I had. Um, so for the rest of the night, anything y'all want to uh, question-wise, characters, anything you need help with gather um, campaign questions, out of character stuff, policies, whatever. Yeah, um, I, I got one. Uh, so the deity gives you like these perks, right? In-game perks. Standing, um, Chaos Agent actually sent me a gift sub subscription to be a pro user, so it's opened up some other stuff that I think we can all take advantage of in campaign if that's what you're asking. No, 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 no. I'm talking about um, uh, the deity itself and like. Um, Does it give? I was going. Uh, get special powers, I guess, is your question. Right, right. You are the cleric mage, correct? Uh, yes. I don't At know if minimum, I need to add anything to the character sheet because I don't. I'm not really familiar with um. That's basically all. Um. So here's kind of, we've got two clerics in the game and a paladin. The reason I ask everybody to pick out a deity to follow, particularly if you're a cleric, druid, and we don't have any druids in the game, role-playing reasons more than anything, I'm not going to use the complete book of clerics, but what we can do, um, the way clerics in second edition work is fears of influence where certain kinds of spells are from. Just saying, you follow Bacob and you just get these standard stock in the player's handbook that describes what spheres you get and basic powers. Like, and if you would like to to sit down with me and you want to customize that out and 
magic deity instead of going with the stock set of spheres as customize your character out in other words and you know words it's specific to magic i'm okay with that but if you're fine with just saying you follow macabre we can do that yeah i'm fine with that yeah that's only if you more or less like specialize in that particular deity because i'm just i'm just a cleric a regular old cleric you know what i mean i didn't <clears throat> i didn't go a specific uh um, but you've got probably a group of deities like pay you know the typical yeah, yeah. ones saint cuthbert Pale. okay and i'm fine with general clerics i didn't want to tell anybody you had to about it um well just you know like because uh, i know you can be like a war priest or something and to and just to me not anybody but to me like a cleric with a sword just doesn't doesn't seem right you know i don't know but that's just me I, typical if you if we go with the meat and potatoes um and just do them standard you can't use edge weapons you're limited to things like warhammers and maces really wears my any kind of armor you want but you you know anything bladed that cuts and makes you bleed it's perfectly okay to break kneecaps and bash heads in you just for whatever reason you can't <laughs> and stab but you can smash yeah yeah, and, that, and that's always been, it's like, what? But, yeah, just, like, you know, yeah. for me, a, a priest with a blade just seems weird. That's Perfectly all. okay. And you're and you're a dwarf priest, if I remember correctly. Correct. Because you've got, instead of a ballast, you've got a battle hammer. You might. No, I got a morning, morning star. Star, okay, yeah. Look at a couple... Greyhawk is not one, uh, a world, some of the worlds have very racial, you know, the deities are all racial. Like, uh, Hawk, themed by, like, more like the Greek gods, where they're, and, like, all the races worship them. There are a couple, like, really elven-based gods. You might lean towards things like mountains and mining. So you might want to pull that article up and say there are certain ones you favor, but it sounds like you're happy just going with the cleric as written. Um, yeah, pretty much. As far as the, cool. yeah. be a, a cleric of Bacab and you want to explore it more and say, since we've got just a general priest, if you want to, um, we can talk more about making you a bit more specialized in terms of maybe trading out some spheres, um, making you a bit more a wizard. Um, yeah, I'll have to do my homework on it want to uh either maybe trade emails or get on here like a private room or something we need to kind of figure out well, 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 well i don't need i'm not gonna put extra stress on it it's fine i'll just go i'll go regular cleric it's fine. you know it's for flavor but um is there, you know you're not going to really be able to wear armor like a, a standard cleric um i would recommend oh. using the party so um <laughs> oh Oops. You're probably going to want is a, like an armor spell. Typically, traditionally more or less to dagger and quarter shot after a couple other things. By default, if you're fine with it, is you can use cleric weapons. Like you can carry a shield, you can have them, you know, a mace or a war hammer or just a daggers. And um, we right, go with so the priest a, a weapons. A, a multi-class multi cleric ma magic user uh, can only use cloth. Right, right. Okay. Right. And weapon-wise, being a cleric, the big thing with wizards only using daggers and core staffs is they're easy to learn, and they don't learn a lot about combat. So, so I can use bladed weapons now? What I was going to say, and I'm not explaining it well, is um, cleric version of weapons with a wizard on the armor side. All right, cool. Yeah. So, yeah, if you want, we can just say your main deity is Bacob, and you just kind of run the cleric, um, your standard cleric thing, and just your holy symbol is Bacob, and that's specifically the deity you pray for, whereas Moko probably goes, might pray to various different gods for different kinds of spells yeah 
yeah, as far I, as it, I kind of I kind of threw Paylor on there just like as the main one, but yeah. That, that, Paylor and Saint cool. Cuthbert are the good basic two. Saint Cuthbert is kind of wisdom, but he's just generally good. So he's just he might be your main god, but you might also or and some of the other good ones that you like. Um. He picked a really obscure one. I was really kind of suggesting because eighth or ninth level, you do get animal and priest and plant spells, and those are the only two uh, spheres you can get. And initially, you only get one spell. But his spells would—I'm I'm not big on nature providing spells. I figure there's there's a deity behind it. So, Fiori or um, or Ilana, which are the ones that really. But um, you no, know, they um, for gods. So if we had a druid in the party, I would probably point in that direction. Look at like a god of luck or fate, and it, I don't know if it, gambling is going to be part of that character's background. But of you know, even if you're not a um, a holy character like a paladin or a cleric, which basically is just of the other five, assuming that um, our ranger does end up panning out for us. Orsico is going to be agnostic. That's fine, too. I'm, I, I, I also don't want anybody to feel like, well, I really want to be agnostic and not care for the gods. It sounds like that's not possible, so believe in luck or fate and doesn't really fall. I mean, the gods are undeniably real, unlike in our real world where, you know, so obvious, you know, there are people of faith that believe there's a God, and there are people that don't believe in God. There's clearly divine magic and, and deities in the world, but some people who are not holy choose not to associate or trust in them or follow them or whatever. So if that's Risico's deal, that's fine. I have no problem with that. Courage more is a flavor thing, so... Yeah, Aristotle doesn't really believe in following a god because he doesn't want to cut off opportunities from any of the others. Fine. Um, there's a little research to add some flavor. It's not designed to be a straight jacket or a burden. So that, that I'm perfectly okay with that. And if, again, if that's part of your character's personality, we're good. He's in a nutshell. Um, what else? Um, okay, so let me ask this. Is, is everybody good with, like, non-weapon proficiencies and languages and backstory and um, who haven't done yet or is not quite finished? Looking at the five people that did go ahead and they've got more or less a complete character, is there anything that you've missed or that you still need to do that's not ready at this point that I can help you with? Uh, maybe backstory, but let me put a little effort into that first, and then. And, and it doesn't have to be super deep. Just right. You know Greyhawk well as far as the game world. You're you're new to that game world. Being from the domain of Greyhawk, the free city of Greyhawk is this great big huge city, and it's filled with adventures, which is part of the reason. So let me just. The constable, she's not. First of all, there hasn't been time. She's only made this announcement within the last couple of days. The time for it to go to the four corners of the continent. You know, it, and she's not trying to look all over the continent for adventurers. Adventurers just in the immediate city. So it's a local announcement. So to say that you have come from some distant kingdom, far extreme south, like. Like if you're from Geoff, for example, that doesn't make sense because she hasn't broadcast it. You have to be in in the city of Greyhawk already to. So it can be a simple background. Like I think Risco is just kind of basically, you know, I don't want backstory, but we talked about it. He's a rogue that 
is based in the city of Greyhawk. And, you know, we didn't have to go into tons and tons of details about what that looks like. But in a nutshell, if you're not sure, just put yourself in the free city of Greyhawk. All the different classes are based there. So it wouldn't be out of place for anybody's character, no matter what you're playing from the free city of Greyhawk. So default and just kind of how you became your character's profession and the idea of what you've done to get to fifth level. I will say that you don't have to have an adventuring background. You may have grown up in a temple and just from an early age, you've just studied within the temple and not really done adventure things. You've risen in ranks just from basically essentially or less in your temple or as a wizard or you've been with another party as an adventurer or you were a solo adventurer, you parted ways, you've been in several different groups and you just kind of, you, you haven't really been a permanent member of a party or you've been solo, but if, if you want to be an adventurer, that's fine too. Free City of Greyhawk is a great place to gain those first five levels that you begin with. I can go over my backstory if you want me to. If you'd like. Um, I, I'm fine with that. I just, I, I would, um, I'll, I'll give that to everybody, but their characters don't know it. With that, I just, that's, that's my point. It's like, you know, it's, it's cool for everybody to know the backstory, but understand that your character doesn't know it until the character tells you that. Give us an overview without getting into nitty gritty because I'm sh I'll give everybody something to share in game that they haven't already heard before because there's, <laughs> there's going to be travel time and that's share your backgrounds and getting to know each other in character is a great thing at the start of the adventure when we're you know you're traveling to the destination because you went over it with me and maybe that give people an idea of what to do um, so basically the short uh, story form of uh, backstory of Rosico is that he was uh, born and raised in uh, uh, Greyhawk there. And uh, more or less, uh, he acquires things. Uh, people tell him where to go and where to be. He does it, and then he takes it to wherever he's told to put it, and that's what he does. And he generally does that for okay. what he considers and the good cause. I can go over my backstory if you want me to. If you might. Um, are you still there you cut off talk over anybody if anybody had anything there but yeah see it's a good basic and he's got a little more detail to it than that that's just kind of the overview and i think the ranger guy uh very 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 overly detailed and there's no such thing as too much detail as long as it doesn't conflict uh, the history or the events of the game if you start working in that you fought g off doesn't work because that's not happening. But you know, your backstory and get super detailed and name members and two. And I didn't want to Bex this on you. <laughs> you know, I've I've been there when Bex was there, but I assumed oh. that uh, you know this thing that we're going on, I was probably told to go there. You know. I'm talking about. Josh keeps trying to say something, so I'm going to give him the floor real quick. By the way. Uh, not me. Not this, oh. Josh. Oh, you're talking about me? Uh, I just saw somebody's name blinking like they were trying, and they stopped because somebody else was talking. So I just wanted to, if somebody's trying to get something in and we kept cutting you off, I just wanted to give you the floor so you could get out whatever you're trying to say. So sometimes you breathe in your mic, it makes it look like Channel's active. So anyway, no, yeah. I'm good, thanks, though. Didn't want to accidentally cut somebody off if somebody's trying to say something. Very, very overly detailed. And there's no such thing as too much detail as long as it doesn't conflict. Their inventory as far as equipment. Uh, no, I'm pretty good to go on that. Everybody does understand. Since we're fifth level, it's basically. In our system, you don't have to roll it in front of me. Um, times 10 to get your starting gold, and then you're going to multiply it by 2 and double it. Um, 
first level, you're starting at fifth level, and that either through adventuring or maybe is, has another occupation. Adventure, like maybe you're a blacksmith if that's in your background, and that's where you made your money. But so you've got more money than a, a level one character. So if anybody didn't catch that, I just the starting gold. And then, um, was there any questions or problems? Did everybody get their magic items from that list on the uh, the message board? Their magic items, or didn't understand, or not sure they did it right? Nope. Uh, I'm good to go as far as that part. Who oh, is he's? Um, sounds like everybody has that dealt with. So I guess between now and then, um, I mean, we can hang out and chit chat a little more if you guys want. Um, there aren't any further questions and feel free to interrupt me if you guys think of something or, or something you want else you want to ask. Um, but if not, let's go ahead. Um, I'll put it up. Is everybody good to start next Sunday, actually, in character, where we're going to start at 7 o'clock Central and go ahead and jump into the first adventure? I'm good. Yeah, I'm, good to, I'm good to go. I was hoping we could, um, like... Get going today? Get going today, yeah. <laughs> I just went into this thinking that there are probably going to be a lot of questions, and maybe, you know, maybe... I didn't know if everybody was going to show or not, so... We got a guy well, here. I mean... If we're going to give, uh, uh, what was his name, Chaos, I mean, we could just throw it out there. We could hold off till next week and maybe he'll join us or, I mean, I don't know. How, he, how does he, everybody else feel? I'm all for booting out anyone who didn't show up today and then just open up the LP, <laughs> honestly. Dang. Yeah. Send me a thing this morning, apologizing, said, I'm really sorry. I've got something that came up tonight, and I absolutely cannot be there, but I really am serious about this game, and I really, really, really want to do this. So I'm going to go over all this stuff with him. So. next week. I mean, we, have, we haven't even really uh, started, so. Yeah. Is that, uh, is that the two sloppy or just one of them or what? This is somebody different. Um, neither of the two are in this campaign, so. Rizico and I have played together before. Um, we've we've done some games in the past, so I've I've not ever this is the first time I'm meeting you. So um, anyway, I am going to really go through things with Chaos Agent and make sure he's on the same page. And assuming he is, I'm going to let him know we really needed you here tonight. And hopefully, this is a one-time exception to your availability. If this becomes a habit. You know, I can't keep, even if he doesn't work out, I, I feel like we've got a, a good complete group and I can work with just the four of you and I can adjust the adventure if I need to, including mm -hmm. if I need to switch out an adventure. Um, it's too challenging for four, you know, without it having an effect on the campaign. So hopefully he's with us. I'm definitely comfortable with five. Um, and I specifically went ahead and took seven, knowing traditionally one or two out of the gate just Henchman and dropped out. Henchmen or hirelings. If it gets too dangerous, we can we can do that. Um, those guys. So we're out of the gate, not to have like an ongoing hireling or henchman that I've got to play like my own character. But you know, there's no in character reason that I can justify that you guys play to go to beef up the party if we need a couple extra muscle characters if you know especially if chaos agent so this would look like we're gonna have a fighter a ranger and a paladin so yeah we could absolutely go the uh the henchman route and cool. a couple of you know npc fighters they'll probably be a little bit lower level than you guys but oh yeah that's pretty standard just so uh something that i would point out just just because i've played a lot with slappy in the past um Sloppy is, is my DM of choice. Um, one of the things I would point out is that Slappy is not going to drag you by the nose through these adventures. You're going to have to figure it out, and you're going to have to make the initiative to, to do it. So, And that being said, like I said, you are role-playing your character. So whoever actually has high intelligence, high wisdom, 
you're going to need to lead these groups. Uh, myself in particular, Rosico is a low wisdom, mediocre intelligence, high charisma character. He is the uh, comedy. Uh, um, he's going to provide comedy for this group. I can tell you. Yeah, we got, right you got the comic relief guy then. Mm -hmm. I will probably make bad decisions often. Right. Looking for as far as role playing. Not that I want you guys to constantly make bad decisions, but you know that's an example of people that have to you know slaughtered if they you know if they do any role playing so that that's that's good stuff and um uh how, how do you handle like pc deaths do we just roll up another one i mean how, how would how would that um work? i kind of skipped over that um here is my rule we're gonna more or less Assuming that there is a cleric available and the body is recoverable, like, for example, if you fall into a lake of acid or a... It kills you, regardless of where your hit points are, and unless you've got protective magic, and if they can't recover the body, you may have to roll up a new character. Again, I have, I don't like character death, but at the same time... And if I promise people... think people, they won't die, they'll just get captured or knocked out. And the thing is, is people push the envelope to ridiculous and take ridiculous risks. They wouldn't. Uh, if you I'm can fine. be I'm resurrected, fine with, with clear death. I'm, I'm cool with it. I didn't catch what you said. I said I'm, I'm cool with player death. It's cool. Yeah, it's part of the game. I was just wondering, you know, how you have just roll up another character. Wait, we'll try. Uh, what I was trying to get at, and being long-winded about it, is, you know. You, if you can find a cleric and they can bring your body back, you know, we'll go the normal route to see if we can resurrect you. If not, generate a character for you. Um, I'll try to make it equivalent as far as wealth and a new character has no connection to your old one, so you don't get your character's equipment your, because your last character doesn't know your current one. And yes, that's come up too, unfortunately, but uh, we'll, we'll, I'll work with you to come up with a new character. We'll find a way to bring you into the story as quick as possible. And same thing, if you your character without murder, you know, committing suicide, or it's not working for you, whatever. If you want to change characters, that happens sometimes for whatever reason. I'm reasonable about that. Um, I'll, I'll try to get you an equivalent character, the same level and approximate same status and whatever okay that'll work hopefully nobody will. if somebody does die i want it to be memorable in a heroic moment not something stupid and i on that note i don't like running modules like tomb of horrors or slaughterhouses where everything really unusually challenging a lot of the high level stuff tsr put out is like that yeah I we just did two more horrors, man. That that it's tough. Personally, that's not what I'm planning to run. Maybe at if we get through the twenty, playing like Tomb of Horrors, just as maybe even non-canon, just for fun. Although if a lot of people have probably played it, we may not. But like those kind of adventures, um, there's a seventh really high level that 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 is just really over the top and I was going to work it into the end of the campaign and after reading it and looking at reviews and stuff I decided I don't want to do it I, I do want to challenge everybody so it's not a cakewalk and like David said I had a campaign go disastrously wrong it's called Night Below you may have heard of it it's an underdark campaign it starts off about a missing wizard apprentice and slash players that just weren't very bright. It wasn't that they were standoffish or belligerent or anything like I talked about. There were not any critical thinkers in the group. Clues left and right, like um, cloak. That, you know, they go around, they interview. Nobody really took notes or made. You know, I I played all the characters, and it's like play first of all because nobody was into that. They got this information and they didn't bother to hold on to it or figure out how it was going to help them later. Well, I ended up kind of leading them around by the nose because it just wasn't going well. And 
adventures in, they found her cloak and a very distinctive ring. And basically the way they looked at it, they found a bunch of items. They cast a tech magic. Nope, this one doesn't growl. This one. And neither of her things were magical. This was like a group of eight, I think. No one caught that that was her cloak and her ring. And it was a really important point. We went on a little bit past that, but eventually I just ended the campaign because nobody following or they looked to me to direct what happened next and we weren't in combat. So earlier tonight, those kind of players don't do well in my games because it's not a set script. Lay off track for a while. I'm perfectly fine with that. I will find a way to steer the game or later to where it needs to be. I've had interesting wrong in the fact that they didn't play out the way they were supposed to, but we had a lot of fun. So that was fine. We enjoyed it. Um, sure, and it was a Ravenloft one in my last Ravenloft campaign. It lasted three years, a couple years ago. It was a small town. It was a filler adventure. They were going to become the new rulers of town, not part of the scope of the adventure. But we took a break, and they settled down for a couple of months, developing their own kingdom. Long and have the misadventuring fog, as they called it, come along and sweep them away from their kingdom. And I worked off of it. It added a whole new layer to the game, and a lot of fun. So that's the kind of... That's what I mean when I'm a story DM. So I'm all about if it takes us the long route to finish an adventure, to to do things the right way or give you a linear path that you have to follow. Going to six. I'm not wiggling my mouth. Yeah, we. One time we literally went to one of those mega hard dungeons y'all were talking about. We got into it, looked at it at the entry, and we said, fuck this, or he turned around and left the dungeon. The, two, the time I ran the Tomb of Horrors, I of many things, and I pulled out the deck, and they all drew cards, and a lot of interesting things happened rather quickly. Uh, but, um, I would like to point out that Gnome did not participate in pulling any cards. Did not, which happened to be the said player we were talking to. But anyway... every card it was everybody drew a card i think there were still ones in the deck but item um i think you've got to state how many you're pulling in advance and you play them out in order but for whatever they decided to play russian roulette with the tomb of horrors because um they had a bad feeling about the place and I, they didn't actually know they were in the tomb of horrors there was in character reasons why they decided it's just not the best of ideas to Kind of an unusual situation. The whole group bypassed the adventure, but because the players were refusing to participate in the adventure like we talked about. There's a whole long backstory on that. But anyway. We left. Would be but at the point, he, he rolled with it. It wasn't like he just got mad and stopped playing. So it wasn't a case of like that, that Leo was talking about D who like bluntly is like, oh, you want us to go in the castle, so I'm not going to go in the castle. I'm going to go, and she pulls out her character map. I'm going to go check out Unicorn Island instead. Well, I, this, I, you know, and there was no reason, you know, just to be difficult to show me, well, I, I can go wherever I want in your world, and you have to cater to my needs. You know, that's what I was talking about earlier. So participate, though, and not, you know, turn around and exit. But I don't think I'm going to have problems with this group of players, so I don't want that story to confuse anybody because it sounds I just said, but that particular game and what you're hearing in the story as to why that was acceptable for them to set foot in the Tomb of Horrors and leave. So, um, else, um, Treasure Division, I don't want to break the fourth wall um, I don't think we're going to have anybody get into fights over treasure, particularly magic items. People have hoarded, and you've got one or two that have way too many, an unfair share of items versus the rest of... Um, sometimes a treasure negotiation can just get tedious, so 
you know, we'll play it by ear. So letting the group deal with it in, in uh, character. But if we're at, you know, it's being cooperative and we're just really having this and stuff and we need to kind of some stuff, we might kind of break the fourth wall a little bit there, but fast rules on that. So no pre-verse space. Uh, so no P-verse B. I don't really want, yeah, I definitely don't want to get into, uh, you know, actual fights over. Now, again, here's a little bit of an exception. And this goes like, back like to talking or you mean like, like actual fighting each other in the game? Um, um, character conflict where you get an in-character conflict that everybody gets heated character um there might be situations where as part you get a cursed item and somebody gets possessed really no character versus character fighting and again if it's really clearly role playing and it's we're telling a story and it's not of us getting into a out of character fight i'm okay with it some tension is okay like it, you guys can just tell. And not every one of my games has been. The, I don't want y'all to think every game I've ever run has been a disaster. I've games. I've had several campaigns. Like the Ravenloft campaign at Risico was in was um three and a half years, and it was a an in person game. I've ran I've run two two seven year games play by post that eventually just fall apart because I just people. But I've had a lot of really successful long running games, but. Along with that, I've had a lot of burned or you know, just standoffish players at the start and it didn't get very far. But generally speaking, I've had a lot of great experiences too. Other than one person in this game, I just wanted you guys to you know, the worst and hoping for the best so I was prepared. But I, I, I'm very comfortable with this group of players. I'm going to have to be a real hard ass on any of that stuff. So yeah, we'll, we'll play Treasure Division by... And if we conflicting in characters and it's you know totally in character and we have a moment like that, I'm fine with going with it as long as it's and in danger of breaking the game or becoming an out of character fight. Anything else anybody wants to talk about? Mm, I think you've covered pretty much everything. Everybody is um um pretty comfortable with everything. Let's go ahead uh, and shoot to get together next Sunday here in um, channel. If you guys need me, I'll check in with you guys a couple times. If you do need help with anything, if you want to shoot me your backstory and post it somewhere on your character folder. I will follow up about getting character token. I know how to set it up. I just um, I'm not sure like where the what your access is to getting a character token. If you don't know, uh, the players can't set up a token. The DM has to. No, I've got a, a affiliate with their character sheet. Can they pick one and bring their own in, or you can make it available, and they can you can make multiple ones, but. You're talking about tokens. does anybody yeah i added my own are, are you gonna do something i've different? got got two sitting on the map um uh, and i may yeah, need to are, associate those those are uh avatars so every every player can add an avatar to their character sheet but the actual token is um dm dm only okay and I need to pick out a token for everybody, or does everybody need to find artwork? How do we need to? I guess my well, last I, game. I can, I can get my I can get my own uh own art, artwork, but uh you know, but uh, I. 
Here's how do you want to do it, DM? I, I'm, I'm good. If, uh, some people, if you want your character to have a certain look or you have got, you can find your own artwork, I put my email channel, and if you guys want to email it, I have Photoshop. I am not like a Photoshop guru, but I'm pretty proficient because I'm... We can paste them in the <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, I, I, I have CS4. No, help you guys out too. I'm kind of angry with it. You guys know what you want to use, and you guys can crop it or whatever and get it together. Mm -hmm. I'll associate with them. So if you guys want to get me your artwork that you want to use, that or whatever, I, I don't care what it is as long as it's you know something you know reasonable. Okay, like for me, this is what I have. Is that is that are you good with that or do you want like a circular one or something of that nature? We use I don't care about shape. It can be square or circular. It doesn't. I'm not that. You got a game piece. It, it can be a face. It can be full body. Yeah. Okay. I'm good. I'm good then. I'll, I'll I can resize them as a DM and and you know, that's fine. Um, if if you want to just use something like like I said, my last game was I used a lot of eight bit characters. Yeah, we had somebody shoot me your, your email because I uh, I might need some source material and uh, maybe put my email up if anybody needs to contact me. But um, uh, you know, I'll try to get everybody's tokens set up this week if you guys can get me artwork. You know, and if you want to use something silly like uh black mage from as long as nobody has the same token the generic early final fantasy characters like you're playing to use the thief or like link from zelda that's kind of that's kind of fun in um, my last campaign on here um well they all they had artwork because somebody had done character sketches of these characters a long time ago because it was a reboot campaign so we use that but it's a sprite like a video game sprite or a, a picture or whatever and just crop the face of you and get it associated so i think that's really from what i'm hearing all we need mm -hmm. otherwise you know i think we're good to go i'll check in with you guys i'll post my email address if you need to send me anything if you want to email me your backstory you can otherwise if you can just go on to um and just thing and just so I can look over it and just say wait I think everybody's got a pretty good idea of what they need to do since I'm here feel free to ask me I will check in here and on the uh, roll 20 site on the message board so PME discord or that or uh, up on nine um, I think we're good um, so everybody can take off and we can call it a night unless anybody has anything cool. else. Uh, nope. We'll see you all next week. Thanks. Thanks. So come back. And I may be in touch with you guys probably in the next day or two about, um, you know, things like those of you who said that you could help out with um, the uh, uh, scripts and some things like that that I'm less familiar with. We can find a time to meet up online and, um, didn't use a lot of the script stuff last time, and I've not. I know how uh, d dynamic lighting works. I've never actually used it, so you know, might oh, might have some questions about. That. So you haven't you haven't started any maps yet. Um, right now, now I'm going with the fog of war. Okay. I haven't, you know. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty handy with a uh, uh, with a uh, Photoshop, and I do Blender stuff too, so I can help you out with that if you want. Um, so yeah, like I said, I, um, I've got maps ready to go. I, um, just what I used last time is I just put the fog of war and just cropped out. And so I'm open to definitely trying to integrate that. It's just worked. I've, I've watched games do it. I've just not done myself. Okay. Yeah, I can help you out with uh, dynamic lighting. I have a couple videos for you to watch, right. actually. Um, uh, there's a guy <clears throat> on YouTube that um, he has a uh, playlist called um, 
like mastering roll 20 or something like that and it's for dungeon masters who have already familiarized themselves with the basics and need to know a little bit more about the advanced stuff like dynamic lighting and how to um, do maps and, and stuff like that um, what I what I've done on a lot of it is I've photocopied the actual DM maps and I've got them blacked out. Yeah. What we may do. And what I did last time that and then I will rooms of places where there might you know. Add if you guys enter the room and it's from itself. And set up up on the DM layer and I can reveal them or whatever if there's like hidden traps and stuff. Mm-hmm. Whereas they're using like a whiteboard where you draw things out like in person map where you put your your minis in and a how I I I just haven't done like detailed maps where you move your at all times where you guys move your tokens through the maze. Yeah, if, if, if you're more comfortable with just describing it, it's cool. That's cool. Just you know. But the, Roll twenty virtual tabletop is going to be more visual aids as opposed to. Um, I'm open to definitely trying to keep that consistent. Through an overhead version of um, bug anybody, you know, if you're make lighting where you just, you know point of view from your token. That's fine. You don't need to like overexert yourself and make like crazy tons of. And it might not yeah. work, the, you know, the... I can show you how to do all that stuff if you want to learn how to do it, too. My usual it's pretty roll 20, but hey, if I can work it in and yeah. in certain places. It's it's really, really great <clears throat> for um, immersion. It, every once in a while they have stuff like that. Um, and I can, like I said, I can show you how to do that stuff. Uh, if you Tell you where that really sounds like it might come in handy is when we actually get... To to um the against the giants where we it's going into caves yeah or we might really i can see against the giants because a lot of the raven laws we're not going there are going to be dungeon crawls in it but not i could really see thing in those kind of maps really being um well, you, uh, you a layer of depth yeah. for those particular set of adventures when we get there so um, I'm creating my token right now, and um, if you want to, I can show you how to uh, set up a token uh, for dynamic lighting and all of the uh, the little in intricacies of uh, tokens. Okay, I let me uh, roll twenty, and I can stick around for a little bit and do. That. Okay. For a second, he's been really patient. But let me, and I want to go ahead and kick Dallas from the game right now. So, yeah, from, that's probably a good idea. I have to do some further. You don't, you don't have to. Do roll twenty. It's muted. It's because my camera is fighting with. Um, I'll still hear me. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. Still working with it open in Chrome. Okay, everybody else can take off if you want. Um, I will look at the um, the token thing real quick. I know how to assign it. Um, stick around and just take a quick look at like the dynamic attributes and all that. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the evening. So we'll be in touch over the week, and we'll plan to start next week. Oh, All right, it might be. Shoot, I think that's a JPEG. So that's not. That's not the one you want. To As I say, I think I made all my tokens with JPEGs in Photoshop and just uh, character sketches can, that a player had done. See if I can uh, just uh, drag and drop this token I just made. There we go, drag and drop. P 
PNG. There you go. All right. That's a PNG. All right. So if you, in, um, in Discord, I just sent it in Discord. If you right click it and then, um, you know, save it as Weegloff or whatever, uh, as a PNG file um, on your desktop. Okay, boom, got it. He's okay. downloading right now. And then if you open up the virtual tabletop and then click on the, um, not the minimize button, but the uh, window in window button or whatever it's called. And then, uh, right, we're... And then just go ahead and literally drag and drop it from your desktop onto the uh, virtual tabletop. And it will upload it into the game. Yeah, that that part I've done before. Let me just do the window where I've got app when window and window where I can look stupid. Okay, there we go. And boom. And I just need to resize you. Yeah, yeah, you're probably going to want it to be about uh, one square because usually the squares are uh, five feet a lot to square naturally, yeah. And then uh, if you click on it to select it, uh, and then double click it, it will open up the um, the, the specs for it, the technical specs. And then um, in the top left corner, there should be a drop down. And what that drop down it does is it accesses all of the character sheets in the game. So uh, there just, it is, I remember Yeah, this. if you just click on the drop down and then type in W I E, it should go straight to Weegloff. And then if you hit enter, it will enter um, Weegloff's name in the field below. And then if you click the box just below that, or just above that uh, field, it'll actually show um, the name below the token. That's the uh, show name plate. Yeah, show name plate. And then um, on the right hand side, usually, so there's each token has three circles. There's green, you know, the default colors are green, red, and, and blue. Usually. And blue, people, red, and. Yeah. Usually people have green as hit points, red as armor class, and blue as movement rate. Um, but that's all up to the DM, how you, however you want to run the campaign. <clears throat> and then the colors we did are... what? Go ahead. I was going to say, um, we did, we did agree on like, um, I know like we used one of them, like ammo for some of our archers. Yeah. yeah. Like hit points for, for, the, for our mage. Yeah. On the first one, bar one is always green. So we, we did agree that track different things with it so right we'll put that in um and then okay sure... so we glove's a paladin so he's got this circle of control yeah and then um, I don't know. once you figure out the um the different fields that you want in the circles um, if you, uh, if you click on the drop down next to them, you know, there's each character sheet has like a hundred different statistics all the way from hit points to their intelligence and all that. And you can actually make, um, custom statistics, like you said, ammunition and stuff like that. Uh, but so if you, oh, go ahead. I was just agreeing with you. Oh, okay. Um, now, because we, we've done all that, but it's just, it, it's been a while, so. Yeah. With, I know for sure hit points is an obvious one, and then we'll. Yeah, so if um, whatever color you want to be hit points, see, the top one I think is green, uh, the second one is um, red, and I think the bottom one is blue. Three is blue, yeah. yeah. And the thing is, is in the order right to left is different from the menu where you... Yes, yeah. 
we found was kind of annoying because the colors are in a diff different order above the tokens' heads than right. they are in the menu. But, yeah. You know. So if you... Um, we'll get that figured out. Yeah, if you click the uh, drop down next to the green one, if you wanted the green to be health, if you just type in HP real quick, um, it'll skip through all the possibilities from my character sheet and find my current HP, and it's going to enter um, just the current HP in there. And then if you want the bar to actually show um, above my, car my token's head, um, if you type in the maximum HP uh, next to it, um, I think it will create the bar. Yeah, and I can review all that. I'll get everybody's um, up and um, yeah. um. And then um, for the dynamic lighting stuff, um, there's you can see two tabs. There's like general and advanced. I think. Yeah, basic and advanced. Yeah, basic and advanced. So if you click on advanced, um, there should be some stuff that pops up like. for dynamic lighting. And usually you want um, people's natural vision to be in there. So I'm human, so I would have um, zero feet of light, and then it would fade at zero feet. And then um, you would click the box for my token has sight. And then um, you don't want to click the box for other, other characters can see the light because then they would be able to see out of my eyes, essentially. Uh, or what that's would... good for is, like, if somebody has to run somebody else's character. Oh, no, it's uh, well, it's good for, like, if your character has a lantern and everyone else can see the light of your lantern, then you would click that box. And you I know have... sometimes, like, somebody ends up running a character for them because they're absent. I've seen it used that way. Yeah, well, you that's not thats not where you do that. That's on the character sheet. Um, you would give uh, access by clicking edit on someone's character sheet, and then um, when the edit part pops up, it says can be viewed by and can be controlled by. And okay, right, right. Yeah, yeah, and that's where you would give control to someone else. <clears throat> um, okay, cool. Yeah, and then uh, um, the, uh, let's see, down below there should also be one for um, the uh, advanced fog of war. Um, usually if you keep it blank, it will be um, set perfectly to like sec second edition specifications. Um, I don't know if you were wanting to use Advanced Fog of War in your campaign. It does make dungeon exploration much, much more, uh, I guess, a little easier for characters because if you use that setting, the tokens remember where they've been on the map and you essentially uncover the map as you move. And so if there are Okay, that's cool. Yeah. If there are unexplored spots, they still appear as dark areas. So it can be a lot of fun. And I I've, I've actually seen that on this Twitch game that I watch. Um yeah. Because he is broadcasting it on Twitch. Um really is visual, you know, very heavy, very, he puts a lot of detail into his maps. Yeah. This first one probably what we'll do is I'm going to use the regular Fog of War and uncover so you guys see the group map. No, it's just good for... You know, the basic dimensions that and yeah. they're starting out, but definitely exploring when we get a little more a little deeper into the campaign like and more dungeon crawling with, like I said, like the Night Below, or not Night Below, but against the Giants. Yeah, yeah. And then um, if all those uh, settings are the way you want them to be, then you click on Save Changes. At the bottom, there should be a little button that says Save Changes. And then it'll, it'll okay, lag a little bit because it's actually saving on the server. <clears throat> and then if you um, click the token to select it again, and then hold um, Shift, and double click the token, it'll open up my character sheet. Okay. And then in the top right corner, there's the edit button. If you go ahead and click on that. Um, okay. 
it will uh, expand to the edit version of the character sheet, and that's where you can see um, my avatar should be in the top left corner. There should be uh, an area for the actual token. So if you still have the token selected, you can click on use selected token, and then it will populate the token in there. And this is essentially a photocopy of the token as it is right now. So if in the future, if you change the token settings at all, you have to resave it to the character sheet every time you change the token. I seem to remember that fr okay. from pre past experience. Yeah. And then once the token populates, uh, you scroll down to the bottom of the character sheet and you click the blue save button mm -hmm. and it will save the token onto the character sheet. And then from there, I should be able to drag and drop the, my token from the character sheet onto the board. By um, if you if you go into the uh, the journal tab, and you find Wiglaf Huvanen, if you hover over his name like the text of his name, and then click and drag onto the board, you can click and drag tokens onto the board. And you can do that with monsters, other characters. That's that's exactly how I do my monsters in my campaign. Okay, and I remember doing a lot of that once I got the hang of it. Um, so it looks like you've got your character computers like you. It's like you're kind of like hopping all over the board, but I think that maybe is because my Oh no, I'm um, no, I'm 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 deleting the token and then uh redragging and dropping it onto the board. That's why. <laughs> okay, that, that's why. I'm seeing like a it looks like a big fog of war square around you. Right. That's my um aura <clears throat> that's my aura of protection. Okay. <clears throat> Paladins have yeah. a, a ten foot or of um it's like Okay, and you've uh, got that set. Yeah, yep. To we I used um we had colors for different things like the campaign I talked about. It wasn't a standard D and D campaign, they were twin sister rangers, the parents were. Mm-hmm. And at, which could both go invisible at will, so we had I think yellow if they had the yellow bubble it was like really tight I seem to remember that um, they were both go invisible well as part of their character power yeah I just agreed on what color or or as right so um, like I said, I just gotta. I've I've been working hard on a lot of stuff. I just need to get everybody set up and um, the same. Anyway, um, would you like a link to um that YouTube channel I was talking about, where the guy explains how to do uh, dynamic lighting and all that? Just... He's a really great guy. He's uh, he's from Texas. Uh, his name is Cody. And um, his channel is called Taking 20. And I've been subscribing to him for about a year. I think. And he has just really great videos about um, how to use Roll20, how to DM, uh, how to DM stuff. In Take a look. Edition. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Taking 20. And then his playlist for um, instructions is called, it's like I Mastering Roll20 like or something like that. Let's see. I'll give you a link straight to his playlist. This is the one that really opened my eyes about the functionality of Roll20 and why it's better than everything else out there. Um, Where? Call for aid. Dungeon Master's got to take 20%. Let's see. Hmm. 
I'm just not finding it right now. <coughs> Do four more. Master series, yeah, there it is. Okay. He should really put this as his first playlist because it's it's good stuff. Hey guys, it's Cody with Taking Twenty, and welcome to the first video in my new Roll Twenty Master oh, Series. Down, Let's post it straight so into the Discord channel. There. Sit down and get this thing knocked out. It's something I've wanted to do for a long time, and uh, I really hope you guys will enjoy. Uh, I so appreciate. This, I will check that out. Is designed okay. to help you cool. guys become masters. See, my dog is starting to get really super whiny at me because he's been pretty patient with me hanging out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and stuff. So. Oh, so, so, um, um, I will. Again <laughs> during the week, and um, you know, like I said, we can touch base from there, and I will get with Chaos Agent and help with. I will touch base with you through Discord. Okay. Cool. But. Hey guys, it's Cody with Taking 20 and welcome back to my Roll20 Master time. Series. So, one question that I get asked almost every single day is about how to create tokens, where to find them, where to download 